Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you into the Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So today I think you guys are going to be getting an episode of Far Beyond the World and an episode of Echo. So let us see right where we left off. Ah, yes, the day of the feast where we got to meet Tano and a bunny boy whose name I cannot remember. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me take you the next 20 minutes and let's jump right into it, shall we? All right, Alarm Chain, you are up. All right, here we go. <clears throat> And he says, I'm the inexperienced healer. She addresses some other wolves, and I can hear a spurt of laughter. Very well. Tano pats my head, ruffling my hair in a playful manner. No hard feelings, eh? Another soft growl escapes Rannick's throat, and again, I widen my eyes at him. What are you doing? What has gotten into you? Now, even his father noticed how agitated the wolf is, but thankfully that forces Rannick to let it go. Jeez, what was what was this pep talk all about? T talking I need to keep my wits about me. He seems far more inept at this game than I am. I look around the table, seeing plenty of roasted game, forest fruit, vegetable tarts, and pies. It's more of a feast than a dinner, and I must admit I look forward to eating. Everything smells so good. Hmm, <laughs> allow me. To my surprise, Tana picks up my wooden plate and nods towards the dishes in front of me, waiting for me to indicate whatever I wanted. Reluctantly, I just point to what I assume is a roasted chicken and some vegetables. As Tano serves me, I look around, seeing that pretty much everyone helps themselves anything they like, so this courteous gesture comes out of nowhere. Eventually, Tano places the plate in front of me, and I smile with gratitude. I dig in. Not keen on using my fingers, but it seems cutlery here is only used to carve the meats before placing them on plates. The chicken is succulent and very aromatic, but the meat is oddly sweet. It definitely has a gamey taste to it. Again, a quite remarkable recovery for the state you were supposedly in. The white male looks to me expectantly and I flinch, sobbing myself at the very last second from responding. We can all agree it's for the best. The sooner he's healed, the sooner he'll be gone. The chief says in a dismissive manner, not even looking at me. However, Trist, who stands behind them, behind them, keeps giving me an evil eye. Fuck, this is awkward. I chew slowly, diverting my gaze to Rannick. Trist, that was his name, okay. He keeps staring at me with clear longing, as if I were the only person there. I try to kick him, but the table is too wide and, is too wide and I end up banging at one of the supports. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Everyone looks at me as the table bounces and I can see a satisfied smirk on the from the brown rabbit. I sink my face into my palms, utterly embarrassed. Fuck! So... Mm, sorry. Mm. So... Human. I blink as the chief breaks awkward silence. Why is he addressing me? I supposedly shouldn't be speaking their language. Are you one of the Vanar? Everyone regards him surprised if he did something very strange. Even the rabbit looks rather spooked. The chief glares at me expectantly, but I don't respond. I'm speaking to you. He insists. What am I supposed to do? I don't think he understands that language. What language? Absurd. You don't mean to tell me he has come here all the way from Freyfall. Is that where you're from, human? Again, everyone looks to the chief with shock. What's going on? Freyfall. Freyfall? He reiterates, but again I just blink. The confusion of the situation aided me in keeping my mask of ignorance. Eventually, the chief sighs and annoyance and waves his paw at me in dismissal. I never knew you spoke both those dialects. Only a little bit. Wait, did the chief slip, slip from one language to another without me even realizing? How is that possible? I don't understand anything. Is he stunted? <clears throat> no, he just seems quite lucid. So what are you suggesting, that he's not from Avalon? I feel the white wolf turns towards me, drilling his eyes into my face. <laughs> this is getting quite interesting. Avalon, this continent. The chief pats the table as if to illustrate his meaning. Are you from here? Truthfully, even if I wanted to answer that question, I have no idea what he's talking about. That emptiness in my mind is finally useful for once, giving my reactions more credence. Looks like the human is much more than he seems. Extremely young and frail for someone who has crossed the sea. Hmm. The chief looks to the white wolf and then gazes at me, as if he was truly measuring me for the first time. Well, if he comes from Euron, he'd have to depart at least a year ago to even get here. 
<laughs> You're right, Chief. That's not an easy journey, even if he had plenty of coin to spare. There's more to his story, that's for sure. The boy is craftier than he looks. Rennick narrows his eyes in clear annoyance, perking up his lip to show the tip of his fangs. Please, control yourself. I see your point. The chief nods. Curious how he landed on our doorstep without getting noticed by our sentries. <laughs> Would it make more sense to keep him under lock? Stockades, perhaps. Why risk Rennick's life? We can have the human repay our hospitality another way. I flinch at the suggestion of being locked up, but Rannick quickly puts a stop to it through a soft growl. Your concern is touching, but I'm sure I can handle a puny human. He's being way too obvious about any of this, and I can see Trist has picked up on it. He gives me telling gazes, trailing his eyes from Rannick to me every time the Grey Wolf reacts out of proportion. If he only were just that. He might be quiet, but I can see intelligence behind those eyes. He's looking at us as if he understands what we're saying. Fuck. Guess I was wrong about me pulling this off. You're being paranoid, as always. Or perhaps the three of you know more than you led us to believe. Are you suggesting any of us would risk the safety of our people? I don't know. I'd like to believe you wouldn't. And yet, here we are. You brought a suspicious human into our village and... I jump up as I hear Vul, as I hear Vul slam his paw on the table. I didn't even notice when he arrived. If you don't hold your tongue, you'll be lapping soup with it for the rest of your life. Is that supposed to be a threat? It's a promise. The black male growls nastily, giving that familiar murderous stare, and I'm surprised how defiant Tana remains. He must have known Vool for years. I would never edge him on like that. It's almost suicidal. Stop your bickering. The both of you. If you're so worried about this naked monkey can understand us, then at least, very least, don't let it hear us squabble. The chief barks out in annoyance, and for a moment all conversation ceases. Vul huffs heavily and moves to the edge of the table. I nervously pick at the chicken, pulling the sinew apart and nibbling on it. This has gotten uncomfortable quite fast. In the corner of my eye, I notice Vithria approaching from with a rather wide smile. He winks at me as he passes the table and sits next to the chief. You're late, as usual. Could show your chief a bit more respect. The old male grumbles. And why do you reek of yeast and preserves? <laughs> I did a bit of baking! Vithrid looks in my direction with a wide smile. Ugh, you and that flowery pastime of yours. Who pissed in your mug? It's just those two. The chief waves his paw between Tano and Vool. Constantly at it like pups! Ha <laughs> ha! Never a dull moment with them, eh? How about we get some ale and forget the pups for a change? First good idea I've heard the whole damn day. Oop, one second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. I'm back now. I had to put one of the cats in the other room because he was messing with one of our other ones. <clears throat> Alright, let's go. <clears throat> okay. Alright. Don't mind the monkey over there. Who? The human? I've already seen him. Seems everyone fucking seen him but me. Who else was it on this conspiracy? No, 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 don't be paranoid. You spent too much time around Tano. I'm sitting right here. Am I talking to you, Snowball? No, I let the grown wolves speak. I meant I've seen him today. I caught Rannick on his way here. He gave me a first paw look at his new pet. The boy's a charming little fella. I really wish Trist stopped looking at me with such intensity. It's hard to avoid noticing it when he's directly in my field of vision. Yes, well, don't expect a conversation out of him. He's not much of a talker. Either plays dumb or is dumb. Not sure which is worse. He's simply scared, I bet. Just let him be. Once he feels safe, I'm sure he'll open up and we'll be able to make sense of this whole debacle. With Vithra's arrival, the initial stiffness leaves the table and the wolves begin more casual conversation, with the topics diverting to patrol duties, hunts, and territorial disputes, none of which makes much sense to me. Tana keeps serving me, as if I were an honored guest, bringing me all variety of different pastries and meats. Apparently, the chicken I had had actually, it was actually a honey-roasted pheasant and it really grew on me. As dinner is dragging on, I realize it most likely last until midnight. I need to pace myself as I'm slowly getting it, so I'm slowly getting full, while the food keeps on coming. Damn. 
Like these, uh, these whole feasts are awesome. I take a deep breath and turn around to look towards the ground. It became dark fast, but the fire and the candelabra is giving off a, give off a warm hue, making this place feel incredibly cozy. More and more tribals arrive, with tables now bustling with activity. There's got to be at least a hundred of them. I can see that females with pups are seated at the far edge, away from the adult wolves. For the amount of talk how about for the amount of talk how Kalen I am, I'm glad to be sitting at the grown-ups table. The large boar Volkild is roasting on a spit above the bonfire, and the smell of it is quite something. The size of that thing also sends a shiver down my spine. I had no idea boars could get this large. It's almost as big as a damn cow. Quite understandably, every now and then a wolf stops and regards the roast, raising their mug in the air and shouting out, VULGOR! Each time, without fail nor hesitation, all the gathered respond with a thunderous cheer immediately followed by a long-drawn haw howl. I feel touched by how celebratory they seem and give the black male a discreet gaze of admiration. I silently bop my cup in the air and let him know I am I too am impressed and wish to congratulate him. Full tries to scoff me off, but his tail gives, gives him away with a happy flicker. I must admit, I fairly enjoy Tano's diligence in keeping my plate stocked. I don't know, I don't think Tano is a bad character. I don't think he's an evil character or anything. Uh, I think he's just trying to prove himself. Hmm, maybe going overboard with that. Maybe he'll end up being a hero. Who knows? He's quite careful that I have a good selection of dishes, only giving me second servings of foods he clearly seems to see, sees me enjoy. I can't tell if he tries to make up for the pat for the spat or being a genuinely hospitable person, but I quickly notice it's neither. He's only doing this to get on Rannick's nerves, and the Grey Wolf plays right into it. Every time Tano touches me or idly embraces me, he draws an angered reaction from the other male. I just want to slap Rannick across his ears. Why is he allowing himself to be let on like that? If anyone should be seething, it's me! Tano's polite to a flaw, and I have no other choice but to allow him to do whatever he likes with me with a wide smile on my face. Another thing that spoils my meal is the rabbit. He's making this personal, and as much as I can understand his anger at losing his job, he's one distraction too many. He is probably banging him. Just saying. <laughs> that, that, that reaction seems a little too personal. Yeah. At first, there are many deaf tribes who approach me to have a look or to touch me, with Tano basically acting like a carnival carny. Step right up! See the naked monkey! I'm being touched and petted in the most awkward way, and I feel like a freak show. I keep my displeasure bottled up, but Rannick is not as subtle. He alternates between giving me the same disapproving looks as his former attendant or trying to get back at me by being handsy with passing females. <laughs> Seriously, does he really think I enjoy this? Unwittingly, he simply pushes me right into Tano's clutches. I need to have at least one ally at this table. I envy the chief. He gets to enjoy his company. Victor entertains him with the latest tribal gossip, interchanged with glories of past combats. Luckily, as the evening turns into night, most of the wolves lose interest in me due to my complete silence. I think the fact that I did not understand any of their tribal politics and lifestyle reinforced my facade of ignorance. Eventually, I start to feel a bit flushed, only now realizing that Tano made perfectly sure I never ran dry on wine. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's the plan. Oh, he's gonna get you fucking liquored up. So that you can... You might talk. Ooh. Crafty. You're a crafty wolf. He... Also notice he has a piercing. And Okay, they've got piercing. It's okay. Anyone else got piercing? He's got... Piercings. Okay, okay. Apparently someone in this village has piercings. <laughs> you filled my cups with almost religious zeal, and it's the only thing that slipped my mind throughout the entire meal. I was too focused on not slipping up and too stressed by the number of eyes on me that I simply guzzled from the cup with, a com with complete abandon. He tunnel-visioned me, and I am tipsy. Fuck! I should have known better! The only comfort I have is seeing that pretty much everyone else around me is getting drunk as well. Everyone apart from Tano, who only now notices, who only now, who only now I notice is sipping on water. Ooh, that is interesting. I didn't even realize it was an option, since all I can see around are flagons of wine. He notices that I've noticed and gives me a sly wink. Motherfucker! So, <clears throat> so human. He draws my attention, grabbing a bottle of wine. How do you find our wolven hospitality? Hostility, you mean? Considering every guest so far caught a bad case of the being stabbed to death. Ha <laughs> ha! Present party near present party nearly included. My point exactly. It's a rare honor indeed for another kin to share a meal with a tribe, let alone live to tell the tale. 
Tono smirks knowingly at me and I swallow nervously. He's not out of the woods yet, is he? Mithra jests, but the joke didn't quite land for me. Quite. The white wolf nods and brings the bottle closer, intent on refilling my cup. I try to shield it with my hand, but I accidentally trip it, trip it over, causing the little, little wine is left in it to slush across the table towards Tano. <laughs> That's funny. You clot! The wolf yelps as some of it dribbles onto his leg. <laughs> Look at that art. He tries to jump back to avoid the rest of the spillage, but a sudden jolt tills the entire bench backwards and sends us all flying to the ground. The village erupts in laughter at the scene, the chief spitting out some of his drink in amusement. See both Volga and Verissa splayed out in the dirt causes me to join in. What the fuck are you doing, Tano? Have you any idea how hard it is to get wine stains out of white fur? The white wolf stands up, rubbing against the now pink stain on his left thigh. Actually, that is a good point. Yes, I have. The female growls, standing up, and I can see she's practically drenched in wine, which she has spilled on herself during our flight. I exploded laughing, unable to contain myself, huddling in the dirt. I cover my mouth, tears flowing both from laughter and severe pain as my stomach cramps really tug at the wound. Fuck, it hurts, but I cannot for the love of me stop laughing. Eventually, Verissa chuckles and laughs it off as well. That's funny. <laughs> Here. The black male extends his paw towards me, and although I reach for it, I cannot get up, still held in the throes of my laughter. Eventually, I hear a, sh a snorted chuckle from the black wolf, and that's what finally hushes me. I look, uh, I look at him with a surprise, almost as if I couldn't believe the guy had the ability to laugh. Pink suits you both. <laughs> oh, God. Looks almost as good on you as it does the piglet. <laughs> Wilger throws to the white wolves who are frantically trying to wash off the stains with water and I'm back in the dirt rolling. This is comedy gold and I'm going to piss myself. Despite everyone looking at me, I can't stop laughing for a good few moments, sitting in the dirt and clutching at my sides. So, he isn't mute. Got a good set of lungs on him, that one. The elder wolf snorts in amusement. <laughs> Tell you he'll ease up eventually. Once Volger sets up the bench again, I finally quiet down and, gra and grab onto it. I get up, dusting off my body and cloak, locking gazes with Randick, who's looking at me with dreamy eyes, wide smile painting across his muzzle. I guess he's happy to see me laugh, as most of our interactions were rather depressing, but he's simply giving us away. Reluctantly, I throw him a stern gaze, and he's taking it the wrong way, narrowing his eyes in annoyance. I sigh, sitting down and looking back at the two wolves who still try to wash out the wine. Rennick takes this opportunity to get back at me by talking to one of the passing she-wolves. The female giggles as if his invitation were the most amusing thing she ever heard. Real classy. No! I watch uncomfortably as the girl sits down into his lap and he bra embraces her reluctantly. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Looking good tonight, Rannick. He gives me a discreet gaze as if to gauge my reaction. Really? Really? You're trying to make me jealous. I mean, well, she is pretty cute. <laughs> right back at you, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, that's good. Ooh, you are so strong. He bounces her teasingly in his arms and she giggles away. <laughs> good luck, pup. That's not gonna work. You can float away all you like. A huff and annoyance, looking away towards the chief and Vithra. Those two have been engrossed in conversation the entire evening. Having a friend like that must be nice. Ah, oh, fuck it. The white male sighs in defeat and stops his frantic attempts at removing the stain. He quickly readjusts his expression and looks at me with a feigned smile. Hmm. No hard feelings. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Verissa stands next to us, spreading her arms in annoyance, long streaks of pink fur going all the way from her neck down to her legs. I can't help but choke on another laughing fit. It was his fault. He's not the one who flipped the fucking bench. Ugh, I need a wash and change. She sighs and leaves the table in a hurry. I almost shout out I'm sorry only to stop myself at the last second. I shake my head and return to face the table. Tono uses some cloth to dry up the spillage and places my cup back into its position. Almost as if nothing happened, he reaches for a bottle and tries to refill it. Again, this time with more care, I shield the cup with my hand. <laughs> Come on, the night is young. And since you cannot partake in any conversation, this is your only entertainment, no? I just look at him with a stern gaze, to which he only responds by reaching towards Tristan, snapping his fingers. 
Within moments, the brown rabbit quickly approaches us with a different bottle in his paws. Even being this close to me, the bunny tries to act all tough, giving me aggravated looks, but he's not intimidating one bit. This was, uh, this was a good episode. This was funny. I enjoyed this. I'm definitely going to use that. Her face is just obscured by the candle. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a rather amusing and funny episode of Far Beyond the World. I'm really enjoying the writing and the character development in this, in this particular scene. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!